Hi there learners and welcome to our first video in our series on the PAT for 2024. This is our grade 12 PAT and we're going to take a look just briefly through um, our document to see what is required of us um, and if there's any major changes from last year. So we still have our introduction, you know, what the PAT is or what it's going to be composing of. Now I know there are two big changes. The first one is that you're not going to have phase one, two, and three anymore. So here you can see we've only got two phases. What they've done is to actually incorporate phase two into phase one. So phase one is basically made up of the old phase one and two, and then phase three basically becomes phase two. Okay, that's the first big thing. The second one is that instead of it being out of 180, it's now out of 170. And there have been a few changes on the um, assessment tools as well. So you want to check that with your teachers, but I will be going through that in a few videos. But those are the two big things. So when you, yeah, they tell us when you submit your PAT, finally, you've got your phase one, your phase two, everything that goes along with that. And uh, yeah, then we go into our topics again. I'll be going through the topics in another video for now. I'm just having a look to see if there's anything majorly different. This is just planning the task. Again, they've done the same thing as in previous years. In fact, as in last year, where they give you three topics. Now you can use those topics or you can come up with your own topic, but you have to check it with your teacher first. Also, um, you can't use topics that have been used within the last two years at your school. Okay, so please check that with your teacher before diving into this right then th obviously this is now going to change because of the structure of this whole thing changing so please familiarize yourself you'll see phase one has now been split up into um, task one and task two and there they give us everything there you can see task two and a due date as well um, each school might do it slightly differently but just again check that with your teacher you do want to make sure that you stay on track in terms of uh, deadlines okay and then they just go through with what you need here's a nice checklist when you submit your phase one and again you can see broken up into task one and task two and folks if you follow these rubrics um yeah you really can't go wrong okay then phase two and you can see how they've broken that up there. So yeah, you need to just have a good read through this. And I'll be doing in you know sort of detailed videos on this as well. And let's see, okay, there's task two, and then phase two, task two, due date. You can see everything. Again, they just give they're doing what they did last year, right? Giving you all the details as to what they actually want from you. So um we're always glad for that same submission of evidence for phase two and let's see ah this one don't forget this please the signed declaration of appendix b so let's go through uh, here they give us an appendix a questioning categories right these are they're just giving us a few examples of some factual questions some investigative questions so when you draw up your whole table when you create your table and you're not sure if it's a factual question or investigative they're giving you a few examples um, some change questions some comparison questions this is all in the appendix there okay so appendix b is not part of this particular document um, you must just get that from your teacher because you would have to have appendix b accompany everything um, especially when we end up doing moderation but yeah, everything looks good. It's just those two big changes in terms of it going from three phases to two phases and the marks being out of 170 instead of 180. Mm -hmm. 